Hi there, everybody on the internet. We are back with another presentation, with another session on the second day of the Virtual Developers Conference. Um, Aditya, how's it going for you? Yeah, it's going pretty good. In fact, we have an interesting guest. Uh, he's Kendo from Artinets, and he's a CEO there. Uh, we are going to have, in fact, you're going to have uh, an interview kind of session with him. Let's just tune in to this and uh, see how the, the session goes. Yes, indeed, indeed. So without further, without further ado, let's, let's give a big hand and welcome to Kendall Tank. He calls himself the Geek CEO, and he is responsible for uh, Artinets as well as Timonite, which is one of our uh, partners for the conference and other kind of community activities. Welcome, Kendall. How are you doing today? Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm very pleased to join this uh, DevCon, uh, virtual DevCon today. <laughs> yes, it's great to have you. Um, Kendall. Did you tune in already into the sessions yesterday? Yes, I've, I've, I've viewed a few, a few sessions. Uh, very interesting, very geeky. <laughs> <laughs> I All right, I, I guess this is just matching your own personal passion and interest then. I mean, the geek CEO, how, how did it come to this um, unusual title? <laughs> you know, I, I've always been... Um, um, Passionate about about uh, the technical side of things, and uh, at a very young age, I think I started um, with an Apple II Plus. Um, oh, father, same like me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> my father bought it for the office, and at, at that time, we, of course, we started playing games games on that. And then right. I had my first on the Apple II C, and then I went to Apple II GS, and after the two GS, then I I I moved to um, the IBM PC. Uh, I think the com first computer I had was uh, AT286. Oh, uh, yes. In megahertz. <laughs> <laughs> the, the famous AT. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I think I stayed with the IBM PC for maybe 12 or 13 years. And then I switched mm. back to Apple again after it went okay. back to Intel, <laughs> Intel processors. So I, I didn't know the, the, the power PC and all this, this, these processes. <laughs> so, uh, OK. Okay. All right. Um, are you sure the right field? Of, I mean, with this geekiness and interest for technology. I mean, you are in textile. How actually, how does this actually, I've, I've match? Studied, studied textile. I was uh, wanted to be an uh, electrical engineer. In fact, my real passion was was IT. I wanted to to, to study uh, uh, information technology, uh, computer science. Um, but then I, I thought about. Okay, maybe it's a bit too specialized. I would, I would, I would like to stay have more options, and and so I, I moved to the field of electrical engineering. Uh, but I also had some. I took some optional uh, courses on, on on IT. So in fact, IT is my real passion. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, awesome. So are you? Involved into into the software. I mean, Artinets, Timonite. I mean, I'm sure you have uh, quite a number of applications running. I have seen the Timonite website is is online. You uh, during this pandemic period, I saw that um, you are actually. It seems to offer uh, a kind of a shop in the box uh, um, turnkey solution. Um, are you involved in these projects, like in the in the decision making, in the architecture, or, or even software development part, or is it totally apart from you? Um, at the beginning, I was I was really personally involved in, in all those projects. Uh, I remember I, I started the uh, database team, the ERP team, uh, together mm -hmm. with a few members, three or four members, and then we, we were working day and night. I, I think at, the, at that point, every night I was dreaming about databases and, and all those things. And then the next day I would come back and then together with the team, we would, we would, we would progress. That was mm -hmm. about one and 10 years ago. It was, it was really uh, uh, very interesting. I, 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 like, I like this kind of, type of challenges. And then, of course, um, there's much more than, much more than that in, in the company. So um, now I still have these teams reporting to me. 
Um, but of course, uh, I'm less involved technically. I don't, I don't write code. Mm -hmm. uh, we have about a dozen of people working on, on IT uh, in our company, maybe even, even more than that, uh, between all the infrastructure. We have divided the team into, into three. We have the, the digital team who does all the online part, the web part. And then yep. we have the ERP part, uh, we do all the databases. And then we are all the server network infrastructure side, uh, system administration. So uh, IT is very important for us. That, that's why we, we partner with DEF. And we're yep. also constantly looking for, for, for talents or people who can help us uh, transform our activity. And there's a lot to do, still a lot to do. Yeah. A bit like uh, LSL, who is also has an internal team, and we also have a, quite a big internal team. <laughs> Exactly. Okay, okay. I mean, pretty impressive. I mean, going from um, from being really involved um, doing day and night shifts, which as a software developer we are not supposed to do, but it happens. I mean, this sounds pretty cool. And, and actually, yeah, it, it, you know, I can relate to that easily, as a, even as a full-time uh, professional software developer. These are the times when, you know, you have your deadlines, you really put your head down in the keyboards, maybe even getting some marks because of the keys when you sleep on the keyboard or stuff like that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, what was your observation from the beginning of the year now with the, with the health and, and um, situation, the pandemic situation here in Mauritius? How was it for you as an as a actual classic textile industry yeah uh, we were like all other businesses quite impacted because we as a, as a manufacturing company we need people to be there to produce so yes. but we, we had to stop for two and a half months so this is a loss of revenue but but fortunately which we, we managed to minimize the impact by helping the country to, to manufacture masks in fact we were asked by the government to help in, in this in, in this situation I think during the pandemic, we were one of the biggest manufacturers on, on the island, and we uh, supplied more than one million masks to, to, to the people. Awesome. In cool. And, and like I said, um, you, you saw we, we launched a website quickly because at the beginning, we were only supplying those essential services, you know, the policemen, the supermarket that were open, and mm -hmm. all the people who really needed, the NGOs who were working. And then at some point, you said, like, then the, the population also needs it. How do we get our masks to them? So the idea was to open yes. a, a website quickly, and the team managed to do that in only a few days, three or four days. Uh, we had the idea, we launched it, and then in three or four days, we were already online. I think we, had, uh, we met on the first day, and on, mm -hmm. on Sunday, it was online already. That so, sounds really impressive. You know, you have a lot of things that are that have the in-house capability to, um, to develop things, because um, and, and, and we see that the fact that we have everything in the house, you know, we manufacture our own fabric, we do our own chemical treatment, so we could we are able to react very fast to this to this situation. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Adi George, you had a question coming up? Yeah. So for the pandemic and all, I'm sure that there was also logistics involved in that. So at the company, do you have automated this logistics system or do you still do? like traditional way where someone takes a decision for logistics and all uh, you're, th you're talking about the logistic sending it to the to the customer when we get an order online or you mean internal logistics in the company uh, no uh, for the customers for the customers yeah, yeah. Uh, yes it was it was a challenge at, at the beginning um most of the time we were asking the customers to come and fetch the the goods because we didn't have mm. enough drivers with the with the pass to travel on the island and then at some point we asked for uh, because once we launch our, our website and then we we applied for island-wide uh, pass for our drivers and then and then they started deliver on the whole island so that's our problem of, of deliveries we, we were delivering in fact and we have a strict strict procedure for that uh, our drivers was not touching everything and every, everything they pick up a carton they deliver it they would in fact put it in front of, of the door of a customer and then phone the customer mm. and the customer come out and take it and we didn't require a signature. <laughs> sure, I mean, 
Yeah, sure. Contactless, exactly. I mean, that, that is one was clearly one of the challenges, um, especially then at the beginning, nobody really knew about what was going on. I have also to say that the expression or the term social distancing is, to my opinion, a kind of wrong, wrong intended because, I mean, what we are doing now, this is socializing and, you know, this is like social distance. Like, you know, if I don't speak for, to you, uh, for a week, that would be social distancing. But the real aspect is that you need to have physical distancing and, and not social distancing. Because I mean, but yeah, it it I guess it was a period of chaos, and it's very good and interesting to hear that actually you as uh, the head of the company that you manage with your teams to um, turn this around. And actually, it seems that you managed to seize quite some opportunities out of that, because. Tell us a little bit about the situation with your with shop platform that uh, Timonite is actually running on, because as far as I understand is that um, you helped other businesses here in Mauritius as well to, to get their online channel active and enabled in order that they can, you know, run their business better. Yeah, that, maybe let me sum up. I have three roles in, in this country. I have, first of all, I'm the CEO of the Artinits, which is a manufacturing company. So okay. we employ about 2000 people in Mauritius, so and we manufacture for 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 retailers like Adidas, Puma, mm -hmm. uh, ASOS. Uh, we manufactured for Zalando, for for Woolworths in South Africa, so a lot of big brands. And then uh, two years ago, we started also Timonite, which is a B two C project where we said, okay, now that the connectivity in terms of uh, possibility to you know promote our products virtually or through the web is very okay. You can be in Mauritius, but People don't even know that we are in Mauritius. You can have a website there everywhere in the world. People can access that information. And then we are seeing also that the logistic side, there's a shift between, you know, with the global business at some point, it was what was developing was the possibility to move container loads, you know, big ships uh, of, of mm -hmm. goods from one, from one country, from one port to the other. But with the recent uh, change in logistic, the, it's the capability to really move one parcel from door to door mm, and, mm, yep. and as as the volume increases the cost of that moving a parcel from packet from one one point to point a to point b is going down and we think that it's the right time to to start our b2c project so that not only do we add value in terms of manufacturing you know in manufacturing basically you are just transforming raw material into a finished product and that's the value add addition you can you can do but when you when you bring it to the to the final customer, there's much more you can add. You can add uh, customer service, uh, marketing, yeah. branding, uh, yeah. logistic service, and this is in fact this part has higher value than the manufacturing part. And which, definitely, fact, yeah. when we're doing this part, we're in competition with the developed countries, the high, very high income countries, and relative to them, we are much more competitive on that. So, uh, and I think in Mauritius, what's interesting is that the younger generation. Are developing skills for that. You know, there's a lot of mm. people who are on uh, web specialists. On, on, they are they are SEO. They are they are videographers. They they are on social media. So this I think this trend is changing, and we are seizing this opportunity to you know start something in B two C business. Timonite is only for the local market for the time being, but we have plans to launch something for the international market. So we are currently working on that. So hopefully we'll, we'll announce this soon. <laughs> and in That's fact, I also have a third role in Mauritius. I'm also okay. the chairman of the EEMO, which is the Energy Efficiency Management Office. So, so I'm a chairman of that committee um, reporting to the Ministry of Energy. Mm -hmm. and we, we have the responsibility to improve energy efficiency in Mauritius. So all okay. aspects. Domestic, commercial, industrial, transport, yeah. everything. Yeah. I mean, Interesting. I would like to ask just a small question on uh, using better energy or efficiently using energy. In that role, do you also you advise uh, other companies and also apply those advice to Artinits also? Yeah. First of all, we are as a company we are very open. So uh, a lot of companies contact us to exchange experience, discuss on, on matters on, on energy efficiency matters. But the role of the EMO is really to promote energy efficiency practice. So a lot of mm -hmm. companies okay. at EMO 
EMO also do a lot of sensitization campaign to starting from the student generation. So regularly, every year we organize competition on the energy efficiency theme, sensitizing students as from primary. That's cool. Yeah, I, actually, I'm, I'm also interested in this, this energy efficiency situation, because if I recall correctly, and if my French is not uh, too bad, maybe I'm mistaken, but uh, Artinitz was one of the first uh, companies that also went forward with uh, photovoltaic. I mean, Ah, harvesting well, energy energy by by solar panels or did i mix up something here yeah in fact in fact the reporters uh, got it wrong we invested in 2007 in, oh, right. uh, in solar uh water heaters you know in textile processes we use a lot of hot water to mm -hmm. garment to rinse cloth uh, etc so um so we we, 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 we say to ourselves why do we need to heat that water out of fossil fuel? Let's do it through the solar that we are getting a lot in, in Puerto Sapu, where we are. Yes. So we, we, we invested in, the, in, the, in a system to heat up the water uh, mm -hmm. from solar energy. Uh, and it was really at the time the first company to, to do this at a large okay. scale. Yeah. All right, all right. You know, we did a lot, a lot of things uh, in terms of product also. We were, uh, I think, Back in the 80s, we were the first one to, to manufacture T-shirts on the island. In fact, my father, when, they, when, he, when he came to Mauritius in 1970, it was the first textile uh, export-oriented company. In fact, it was incorporated four to five months, in fact, before the enactment of the EPZ. The EPZ is an export processing yep. zone. Yep. And in fact, he, he, he trusted the government because they were doing a promotion. They say, okay, Mauritius will soon be launching uh, and an EPZ sector, uh, would you be mm -hmm. interested to come? And then uh, at that time he was in Hong Kong and then he, yep. he, he came to Mauritius by himself. He knew nobody, no, no family, no, no friends here in Mauritius. And then after looking at the situation, say, okay, uh, the, night, the island is very nice. Uh, let's come here, let's start something. And then he started, he incorporated the company, in fact, before the, the, the EPZ sector was officially launched. So he trusted the government at the time. And, and launched, uh, so we are really the first textile company in Mauritius. <laughs> that sounds awesome. I mean, this shows, I mean, I get the impression that this geekiness factor uh, seems to um, uh, run through the family <laughs> bloodlines here. <laughs> so, I mean, fact, having this kind of um, um, explorer, uh, adventure um, kind of mindset and going forward with unconventional approaches and solutions. I mean, that, that sounds really good. I mean, impressive. Yes, indeed. In fact, in fact, my father also started a lot of uh, things. Uh, so in 1984, he went to France. In fact, when, when, when the French textile sector was going down, he mm -hmm. went there and bought a textile company there. I suppose you know Bernard Arnault, who is uh, the richest guy in, in Europe currently, who is the boss of LVMH, LVMH right. Louis Vuitton, Moet and C. So yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. At that time, uh, I think it was in 1982 or 83, he bought a company, a textile company called Boussac Saint Frère. And this company, in fact, has one, only one brand that interested him. It was Christian Dior. Mm. So mm. in that company, and then he sold everything. He sold all the textile companies that were in it, all the other other business. There was Conforama, which today is a very big furniture uh, 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 shop in, 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 in France, retailer in France. But he really kept only Christian Dior. And then mm. from that Christian Dior, he went went on to, to buy uh, Louis Vuitton, Moet and C, et cetera, et cetera, all the luxury brands. Yes, uh, yes. So my father bought that company and uh, and, and, and then we, we also started another business in, in France in 1984. And then uh, we all immigrated to France. So I, I stayed in France. Uh, I lived in France for 10 years. And in 1992, he started another company in China this time. <laughs> so, I, I guess that was the time to expand 
towards yeah. uh, again yeah. to, to Asia because a lot of companies at the time in Europe um, expanded then um, their their lines and production and um, you know uh, product uh, production areas uh, towards Asia, especially then China. So yep. So I ended up uh, going to China for two years. In fact, it was uh, mm -hmm. before I completed my studies. Uh, I had no plan to go to China. In fact, at that mm -hmm. time I was studying and then uh, my father was seriously sick at that time. And then I went to China to visit him. And then uh, suddenly um, he passed away. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and then I, I had to stay in China because the factory was just launched and it was, you know, it's some part was still we're still building the factory uh, a lot of things were, were not set up and i was 23 years old at that time so mm -hmm. at 23 years old, i had to run a company uh, in china one in mauritius and my sister and my brother was looking at the one in, in france so uh, during that two years i was frequently traveling between mauritius and china okay and then at, at some point i decided that um, Maybe, maybe I should, I should, I should make a choice and focus on something and, and do it well. So I decided to sell the, the factory in China and focus on, on Mauritius. Hmm. And, okay. yeah. yeah, I guess if you if you you know, split yourself too much, it's just that you get not the expected results as if you go consolidate and then focus. And I, I totally understand that because I mean, even that if you go forward in in project activities in, in the IT sector, it's it's a similar situation because, you know, mentally switching the context uh, between activities um, takes takes quite some effort and also skill and it's not really uh, recommended to do it over a longer period of time. But speaking about the 90s, I mean, you just said uh, traveling a lot, the internet was just starting up. When did you have your first internet connection? I think it was in 1994. Five, I think, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here with Mauritius Telecom then? Or what was it back I, in the days? I was, I was actually, I think, in China at the time. Um, oh, yeah. okay. Dial-up modem. <laughs> yes. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> I don't know okay. It was, it was quite, quite low. Yeah, definitely, definitely. 40, I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, um, drumming on on the bush drums that uh, or banging on the bush drums might have been faster back at the time. But I mean, long distance, uh, it was pretty cool at the times as well. So um, yeah, with with these experience from the past, with the developments on on your dad's side, with your own uh, development, having this exposure to international businesses. How did you manage then to, you know, transform this and, and apply this into into the local business? At the beginning, it's it's, it's a lot of um, intuition, you know. We at the beginning really we were doing things like we know it was the right thing to do, uh, but mm -hmm. we didn't see how the things was uh, connected and then the, uh, why why was this uh, why would this thing that we we're doing would add value to the company. And add value to the marketing, add value to the to the production. It was quite, uh, you know, not not clear in, a, in in our head. And then, okay. we all not ignorant. And then, as 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 you progress, you start to connect the dots and see, okay, okay, when you when you when the company has a good reputation, then it, it helps the marketing, it helps the recruitment, and then you you go into a virtuous circle where you attract more talents, you attract more customers. So it's it's a uh, we, we constantly try to make sense of things and and, and I think throughout the years I've, I've developed what I call a good system thinking skill that helped me um, understand how everything is related. Why do I have to do this? Why is it important? Why is it not less important? And, and um, this really helps us develop the right strategy for the company. Okay. And and, uh, and for example, recently we we we, we started uh, a lot of projects in uh, in AI, in digital, in uh, robotics. The, the reason is because the only way to compensate for the for a higher labor costs or, or higher standard of living in Mauritius is to is through productivity, is through innovation. So yes, yes. we 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 have to invest in that, and so we have, we have launched a lot of a lot of projects in, in recently in AI. My my understanding of AI is simply. Um, you know, 
previously the computer was very good at processing structured data. Okay, you you enter numbers. It can you can a lot of numbers in account in an accounting software. You can just spit out. Okay, this is the result. This is the ratio. This is the percentage. Whatever. It's very good at calculating things. If you want to type story, you can you have to type it manually, key by key. But computer is not good as understanding unstructured data like yes, yes, photos, yes, yes. like voice, like you know decisions, like like things that are that can't be clearly you you cannot uh, sum up in, 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 in easily okay mm -hmm. so the, the era of ai for for us is just the possibility given to to an it system to process unstructured data and, and in, in manufacturing we have a lot of unstructured data you know things that we do manually for example mm -hmm. in terms of quality inspection uh, you need yes. people to usually check that you sometimes have people where you know your hands are busy and you are for example mm -hmm measuring uh, dimension checking whether the measurements are right and then you have to stop and take uh, take a pen to write down the measurement that you've got but now with ai you can just say okay measurement for chest is 45 centimeter just say it and then it's it's recorded so you can yep. you can improve your productivity and, and and there's a lot of a lot of things we have we have thought about for example uh, analyzing the customer review on our on our website you know sometimes people say I like your style, but it's a bit short. Uh, you have a lot of comments, and then, and sometimes thousands of comments. And and through AI, you can you can analyze those 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 opinions, those those reviews, and then it helps you to improve your your your, your product. So let me let me, let me just yeah. let me just jump in here. So I mean, using AI in in the production line um, in the quality assurance. Especially then about visual inspection. I, I think this is um, a fantastic field because, I mean, um, there have been news that even uh, AI in in the medical field has actually a way higher accuracy than than a human operator in regards to um, cancer detection, other infections, and 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 things like that. So, do you have already kind of you know? systems in place um, on your on your textile in uh, manufacturing process or um, what is do you have any um, let's say timeline in the next one two years that you might like to go forward and how in fact, if does there was, um, cloud how, how does the cloud then play into that as well in fact, if there was, yeah actually that would be my follow-up question uh, so we were we were we were in fact just before the confinement we were working on a project to have uh, the fabric quality inspection done with uh, an equipment with ai in mm -hmm. fact it's, uh, it's a high resolution camera which takes pictures at a very high speed and then it goes to an ai engine and then sees okay this is uh, i don't know yarn breakage this is a needle hole this is i don't know a stain whatever can categorize the the, the, the all the defects that we have seen with a much okay. higher Reliability than a human eye because human eye, let's say, you, go, you get distracted for one second and then you, you haven't seen the, 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 the defect. So it is actually something very easily implementable. Mm -hmm. it's, this is not science fiction. This is this can be done right now. Uh, in fact, we also have a, a, a huge um, automated store project where we would use robots to sort, to assemble different cut parts and then store it. It wouldn't be like, I'm sure you have seen the videos like the, the Amazon stores where, you know, there's a lot of conveyor yeah. belts bringing, it's a bit like that. So uh, it's a store with about maybe up to 15,000 locations for, for storage space, centralizing everything, you know, in order to assemble the garment. We just see it as a simple garment. There's a lot of accessories. You know, you need 30, 40 different parts. It can be a simple label, a simple, simple transfer. It can be a simple sewing thread, embroidery thread. It looks like it's a simple garment, but it requires a lot of uh, coordination, different parts yeah. to be assembled together to make it. Indeed. Um, How did you? Yeah, I would just like a little bit of follow up for the AI bot. So most of the AI projects that you have mentioned, uh, so are you guys building it with the team that you have, IT team, or uh, really opening up the scene and outsourcing, or even just buying straight up projects? Um, of course, there are solutions already available on the market. 
but we need to understand it. Uh, we need to yeah, make the right choice, you know, work on this project, evaluate it properly, and then give our, our requirement to the supplier. Uh, this is one way of doing it. But we also developing some internal capacities because there are ideas that we have, we have, but we have not found any solution on the market. So we need to develop it internally. So mm -hmm. that's why I think we, we're also associating with one of your sponsors, Superinfo, <laughs> Superinfo to work on, 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 on this AI project. Uh, and then, in fact, we just launched our AI challenge with, uh, uh, with, uh, with the students of, of Superinfo. Uh, yeah, yeah. Even then, two, two projects. And, and yeah, but, but due to the confinement, it has been delayed to next year. But next year, we are, we are, we are running this uh, kind of AI challenge. Okay, that, that's so, fantastic to see, to get this uh, intercombination. Yes, yes. Um, also with the manufacturing part, I'm, I'm still on to, on to that because I mean, AI with recommendation systems, you know, the consumer interaction to get the shop feedback. Um, this seems that it is quite um, often already in use with, with, you know, international companies. What I'm interested in is that even if your manufacturing process with the robots and things like that, are you using any kind of Internet of Things like, you know, sensor management, uh, collecting data information, uh, maybe having using again AI on, on uh, um, maintenance windows and lifetime spans on your machinery or is IoT uh, not the, the topic for the moment for you guys? You're perfectly right. Now, IoT is, I think, offers a lot of potential and um, I think it can also replace some of the old technologies that we were using. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think with IoT, with all those uh, dedicated network, dedicated systems, hardware, software, platforms, we can have a very high reliability. And uh, I've seen yes, that some yes. even transfer their firefighting system on the IoT uh, to have one integrated platform where you have mm -hmm. uh, um, maybe the, the, the monitoring for your server room, the temperature, the humidity, the, uh, the status of your, 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 your switches, whether there's a flooding. Or, uh, we are planning to have a um, uh, local LoRaWAN in, uh, antenna on our premises, and which is going to, which will allow us to gradually deploy more and more sensors, which will allow us to have an overview of everything that's happening. You know, sometimes you have a breakdown. Okay, the server is down. Uh, why don't we have access? You don't know what is wrong. Is it a power cut? Is it a, uh, a switch that has got a problem? Or you know, you without the Internet of Things, sometimes yeah. you lose a lot of time searching for that problem. But if you have enough sensors, then immediately you know. Okay, someone disconnected somewhere, something uh, yeah. in in the premises. And uh, we have here about. Um, 121,000 square meters of, of land, uh, 70,000 square, square meters of, of building. So, uh, mm. so it takes a lot of time to go through all the different points. Uh, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah. All right, that's great. Um, changing the topic a little bit, I know that you had been uh, a nominee or even a receiver for the um, IBL Tacoma Awards in 2018. What was this related? Give us a, a, a quick statement on to that, please. Yeah, I, in fact, I've, I've always been quite of a, a discreet CEO. I don't like I don't I don't like to to to, to talk okay. about my personal life in, in public in general. <laughs> this is of course an exception. <laughs> but I mean. Being an awardee in this case or nominee, even awardee, I mean, this is an achievement, so. Yeah, in fact, in fact, this is not the first award I got. In fact, the, the, the first award I got is from Express La Sentinelle. Oh, <laughs> there, you, there you see. Now, now we're talking. Yeah. <laughs> 2008, I think. Uh, All right. They are awarding the, the, the Entrepreneur of the Year <laughs> on, on there Express you go. <laughs> There you go. And, and, and uh, this was, I think, thanks to my contribution in terms of transforming the textile sector um, uh, taking initiatives uh, in terms of sustainability, using solar power, and uh, 
uh, in fact, in 2007, it's when we built this new factory where we are now in uh, in uh, uh, Atusam. Um, when we build this factory, we said to ourselves, okay, um, we have nearly 40 years of experience and we we need to see what all the experience that we have and what would be the uh, the, the, the factory of the future uh, yeah. and you know what yeah. once you build it it's there and you're going to use that that, that building for the next maybe 20 or 30 or 40 years so mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of decision that we took at that time was um, for example to get the roof prepared for uh, installation of solar PVs um, we thought about ways to really use all the local resources that we have here the wind the, 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 the rain, the, the, the solar natural lighting, the solar heat, solar energy. So everything that was um, um, available locally, uh, we, we didn't just want to, okay, this is a typical fact, textile factory, you have to build it like this. We, we, we didn't take that into consideration. We said, okay, what are the local resources that we have, the opportunities that we can use yeah. and build a factory according to this. Um, so this is, uh, I think uh, how we innovated in terms of, of textile factory in Mauritius. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, this this is, goes directly in alignment with this um, think global, act local um, um, slogan. And I mean, I can see that because, as I said, I mean, my French is not that wow, but I'm still picking up a lot of information. Um, what's going on? I try to keep in touch with the local businesses. And it's, I mean, seeing Artinitz um, from time to time popping up in the news and, and things like that, um, it leaves a trace even on my side. So, yeah, I mean, it's pretty impressive now to have these information directly from you. So, um, well done, well done. Kendall, we are at the 40 minute marks. Um, just some some one or two questions to, to wrap it up. Tell us a little bit about your situation how do you separate the, your activities at work as being the geek CEO in comparison then with the, you know, maybe at home, you already have full automation at home or is it just a business and home is yeah, very traditional? That's an area which I, uh, was, in fact, I got interested in home automation. Really, I think that was, uh, I was about maybe 15 or 16 years old. Yeah. Uh, I remember I built a PCB um, which was plugged to a parallel port. So I used the eight bits uh, directly one by one. So I, I, I read the, uh, some software to control that, that, that board. And through those relay switches, I could control a lot of things in my room. Mm. Uh, so this is, this is uh, my, my first venture in home automation. Uh, I wanted to be able to have, a, a, you know, to control all the lightings, all the, the heating in my, in my room. Yep. Uh, I, I was in France at that time. But, but this is a field where I'm really interested. And uh, of course, uh, in fact, in the 90s, I was ready to, to stop, you know, abandon the textile sector and then start some <laughs> <home> automation. <laughs> and then I started to start. Maybe, that was, maybe at that time, it was really wrong. It was too early because in the 90s, that was really the wrong timing because the, the market is not ready. Even yeah. today, it's still emerging. But to, I think today is the right timing for home automation. Uh, you have Google, Amazon, uh, uh, Apple, and uh, and Zigbee. They all. Uh, I know. Uh, probably you are aware about they they're, they're launching a common standard, and all these different things will be able to talk together, communicate together. So mm -hmm. there will be standard standard communication, which I think is really important for for the home automation to uh, to grow. Uh, personally, at home, I have a lot of. Uh, I've chosen the Apple ecosystem, so the HomeKit system. So I have a lot of, uh, you know, lighting sensors, uh, firefighting, uh, smoke sensors, video cameras, all on the HomeKit. Okay. Platform. So, it's, so it's, which which, it's quite which of the two? Which of, uh, which of the two locations is actually in your playground? Is it that you experiment at, at home and then take the the ideas towards the business? Or if you say, oh, let's do something cool at the business and hey, I could also use this at home. How, or is it just fluent between the two <laughs> locations? Probably there may be some ideas that, that came from, from home and then I, I brought it <laughs> to the company. <laughs> 
<laughs> Fantastic. I, I remember. I think it was last year. I was I was in Australia, and uh, someone um, called me and said, "Hey, I've, I've, I'm I'm in front of your 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 home, and I would like to to drop you something." I said, "Sorry, I'm in Australia now." Uh, <laughs> so so I. From Australia, I used uh, the the home app uh, from Apple. I opened the door. Uh, <laughs> I, I, from the camera, I saw the guy come in, put the uh, <laughs> delivered the thing, and then they closed the door and then finished. So, this is really practical. Um, uh, it is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, well, just a small question that about your home automation and all. Did you have bigger plans to automate all the things? Or even in in the office, what are your obviously, obviously project plans for the for the factory for the office? Uh, in fact, we we have planned to build a new head office, and we want to make it as modern as possible, as with the with the maximum of technology, future future proof technology. Mm. Um, so we will be incorporating a lot of a lot of uh, home automation, building automation technologies, IoT that. Uh, so that we can, and then when when we inaugurate that office, we'll we'll invite you both. <laughs> sounds sure. awesome. Sounds really awesome. cool. Yeah. In regards to that, um, Kendall, are you aware that we have um, active uh, maker community here on the island, the Mauritius maker community? Are you aware of them? Are you eventually even a, uh, an active member with them, or is this something that um, went? Unexplored yet on your side? No, no, I'm I'm not aware about about this community. Oh, maybe that could be some interesting exchange as well. You know, to get the extra geek factor into it that you might even then be able to share what what you already did. So yeah, they, we have the, the the Mauritius Maker community, yeah. and um, they are quite active. And oh. in regards, they were actually also helping the government in regards to the uh, 3D printing of um, uh, masks and, and the, the, the PPE shields uh, for, for the public health sector in bits and pieces. So maybe there's a chance, you know, to, to leave your passion, to, to um, you know, explore your geekiness even to the next level. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, with that, I, I would absolutely, I really enjoyed this conversation. Um, I would like to thank you personally that you are, that you took the time to speak to us. And as well, um, thank you so much to, to Timonai, to Artinets, being an ongoing um, partner and supporter for our activities like the conference here. Also, you were part of the, the Google Dev Fest that we did last year at SubInfo. And actually, I suspect that the cooperation came from that event, that we actually helped you to get connected <laughs> for your AI <laughs> challenge with SubInfo. <laughs> so, um, Aditya, if you have any other questions, then um, no? No, it's pretty good for me. I would just say, come on the Mauritius Maker community, and we can yeah. share our passions together. And uh, yes. you have a lot of cool toys to play with there. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of things. There's, a, there's still a lot of things that I didn't say about about my, my hobbies and my where where I spend my time, etc. But we will, we, will, we will share this. I think we need to uh, arrange a follow up meeting, a follow up interview to discover and explore these fields that you're active with. <laughs> okay. It was really a pleasure to have you on the line, and. With all the information, what you've been been doing in the past, seeing that you have the spirit and uh, the the adventurous um, activities, um, you're definitely the geek CEO. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, enjoy um, you. the other sessions and, and tomorrow of the virtual conference. Okay. Bye for now. Have a good day. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Wow, that was pretty cool and I mean seeing the comments in the live chat it seems that yeah. um, it, it, was, it was really enjoyed it was well received I mean uh, um, yeah. I didn't expect that actually because you know when you think CEO of a, of a textile company it's like what are they doing then um, you know uh, working with fabrics and having the logistics to to deliver the products but 
it was really interesting to see the incorporation of all kinds of aspects of tech, um, of materials, of appliances, and of course, modern technologies like AI, perhaps uh, yeah. also then machine learning and and future uh, Internet of Things with, with all the sensor uh, detection and monitoring. Pretty yeah. impressive, actually. Things are moving. Yeah. 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 It's also fun to see that or to hear that he, he not only keeps it in the business, but also at home. That's like, you know, this this experimental lab <laughs> to go <laughs> forward to, to really explore things and then see whether it has benefits and advantages for the business. I mean, this is really uh, an interesting thing to do. Yeah. I, need, I guess I need to up my game here at home as well because I mean, <laughs> getting getting some more uh, IoT sensors, you know, monitoring the kids that they are brushing their teeth at the right time and stuff like that. <laughs> sure, sure. Same here. Only have a Google Assistant clock. That's it. I need to up the game too. Yep, yep, definitely, definitely. All right. I think it's time for another break. Um, audience, stay tuned. We will be back in a tick. <laughs> 